nice words and uh, in, in a kind of way uh, shaming ones because the, the, the concept was uh, much older and uh, I simply was ignorant that uh, Linus Pauling and uh, Zuckerkarnel had already the, the term paleogenetics for that. So indeed it's a shame that it's a compliment, but I have to admit that I am ignorant and I'm still at uh, so, uh, so that there are good news for some people that at the same time are bad news for other people. For instance, that, that those news that you were telling me about football matches, I suppose that maybe they are good for Portuguese, but they are bad for other guys. So, uh, but I, I have a good news. This is going to be very short. And the next one is that I'm not going to show any results of structure software. So, uh, anyway, I have to make a perhaps boring introduction on geography and history. Uh, I have to make an overview on genetics, uh, and I'll, make a, I'll try to make a summary of the genetic results we have available on, on the topic, and then I'll, I'll try to wrap up with uh, some uh, perspectives on the future research. Uh, let me say that uh, on geography, I realized that it was really needed because in the materials that were distributed in the, with the Congress, the, the map that is distributed is a meeting, is cutting uh, Portugal from the, the map. So <laughs> Portugal is the westernmost continental part of Europe, on one hand, and uh, truly it's not Mediterranean. It's already totally facing the Atlantic. Anyway, uh, there, there is a strong uh, Mediterranean influence in Portugal, although because the climate is, uh, well, is a mean and uh, other features, perhaps some of them genetic too. And, uh, on the history, uh, I'd like to tell you that the presence <coughs> of Jews in, in Portugal is indeed very old. But, but I, I shall make a caveat to that, is that this proves that some Jew was in Portugal does not mean a, a community. So we have archaeological evidence for some presence, a Jewish presence in the uh, that they as early as this one in, in Portugal, but we are not sure if only from that that many people, many Jewish people were there. But we have uh, evidence that some community was there from uh, the fourth century of the common era, yes. Because when you make burials and uh, you have a cemetery, then of course there's some number of people able to do that. So at least in Portugal. I don't know, uh, I've not searched about the rest of the Iberia, but at least in Portugal, we have good evidence that some communities were present as, as back as those dates I'm sure. But uh, <coughs> the history from then up to what is called the golden era of the Jewish in the Iberia is troublesome as it would be later. And uh, well, I would say that uh, what makes the situation in Portugal uh, particular is that what we call golden age is indeed an age of segregation. So the rulers, the kings, were admitting the Jews in, in the territory, but were treating them differently. They were putting them in, in separate communities with different taxes and different laws and different rights. So I'm not sure if by modern standards that would be called the golden uh, period. So, for instance, marriages between uh, Jews and non-Jews were totally forbidden. And uh, commerce, uh, commercial uh, activities and so forth were, so, were also very severely limited. So, I'll, I'll point out this uh, with dark colors because normally they are seen as, as uh, very optimistic. 
And another, uh, another feature that separates Portugal from the rest of history of Jewish is that uh, we suffered in a, uh, in a certain way from what happened in, in the rest of Iberia, that was already unified by those uh, infamous kings that David was mentioning. So, as you know, the expelling of Jews began in the rest of Iberia and not in Portugal. And during four to five years, we were uh, receiving a number, an enormous number for our local population, uh, uh, an enormous number of people that were coming, of Jewish people that were coming from the rest of the Viking And then later we did the same. There was a decree, but it was a very subtle decree. Uh, really, Portuguese style. Uh, because it was offering <coughs> the Jews, the, those that were staying, those that were coming recently from Spain, either they would convert to the to Christianity or they would be expelled. And uh, there were extra uh, notes on that. There was a, a, a period, uh, a promised period of uh, uh, non invasive method, uh, non uh, uh, admitted uh, Jewish uh, uh, conversion would be uh, tolerated for uh, a certain period of years. Anyway, uh, the things uh, turned uh, re really dark. And so, for genetics, what's, uh, uh, and that was a, a bit the thesis of the paper of Adams, is that intolerance. Uh, was giving rise to admission. So uh, since the Jews were not able to, to escape Portugal and uh, they were forced to conversion, they were also forced to intermarry with other uh, communities. And uh, surprisingly, only by the beginning of the 20th uh, century, it was discovered that some communities, some people in Portugal were in a hidden way, you were still uh, considering themselves as Jews and uh, uh, having some rituals, some remnants of the Jewish faith in, in hiding. And that's what we commonly call crypto Jews. So, another uh, careful distinction I would like to make is that some of the studies we are going to present and will make recently. They do not fit exactly this definition of crypto Jewishness because some of the people that were included were included not because they kept some rituals, some distorted, orally transmitted version of Jewish uh, faith, but because they consider themselves as Jewish or descendants of, of Jewish and they are seen <coughs> as such by the rest of the community. So you go to one of those villages. And you ask people that are considered non-Jewish, and they will point who are the Jewish, and those admit to, to have that uh, ancestry. So those were the criteria that were to us more important than the persistence of rituals. To summarize the demography, this is the, the situation. So we got, as, it, as you can see, most of the communities were in the border of Portugal with the, the rest of Iberia, with Spain. And uh, the, the official estimate, <laughs> it's difficult to make, but it seems that by the 20th century, there was uh, still a, a good uh, proportion of those inner inland communities that were uh, crypto-Jewish, or in the sense I was mentioning before, they were keeping some Jewish belonging memory. The typical case that is presented normally in, in, outside Portugal, it's indeed non-typical for Portugal. It's the Belmont community, which is the only one where the, 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 the Jewish faith, let's say, was more or less uh, kept for uh, up to the 20th century. Uh, and uh, Belmont is not typical uh, for the rest of the community, not only because of uh, uh, cultural things, but also on genetics. And, and uh, Belmont is, uh, uh, well, we'll be back to that 
later, but Belmont has a, a very uh, high level of inbreeding. So uh, most of those uh, uh, that are considered, and now they, most of them are granted orthodoxy, uh, most of them uh, marry among themselves, although there is a strong substruction, I'll, I'll be back to that. Uh, but very few uh, marriages with people, uh, non-Jews. So the genetic diversity of this community is really low. So I'll, I'll focus most of the, the, the next slide to, a, to the northeastern region of Portugal, where a great number of people fix those criteria I was mentioning a minute ago. So they consider themselves to be descendants of Jews. They are of Jewish extraction, and they are seen as such by the rest of the, the host community. This is Bergenza. This is the center of that northeastern region, a uh, small town, uh, although capital of a district. And this was, of course, in the time. Uh, and uh, before going to the genetic part of the conference, uh, I would like to call out your attention to screens that were already spoken by previous Speakers, but uh, I'll, I'll rephrase them in more blunt uh, terms. So, for instance, from the genetical point of view, I uh, broadly uh, I can say uh, that I'm uh, related totally to my father in Y chromosome, <coughs> and I am totally unrelated to a brother of my mother. All right. So when considering kinship and uh, relatedness, you have to be careful about what part of your genome are you talking about. <laughs> so for instance, I am totally unrelated to my father on the mitochondrial part of my genome. And uh, on, uh, on the autosomes, there is a lottery. And uh, on the X chromosome, which is a has been very uh, poorly explored, and it's a source of phenomenal source of information. On the X chromosome, uh, there is a sex biased uh, lottery. So mothers are more important than uh, fathers. So uh, that's to make clear that some of the inferences we make, some of those relatednesses we, we, we present here, sometimes are really biased. Because the same person is related or unrelated to another person or population. Depends on what you're looking for and looking at. So, respectfully and beginning with maternally transmitted things, so exclusively, so maternal lineages, uh, we got uh, this picture very, uh, in a very uh, broad sense that indeed those populations we have studied both in Belmont and in Bregenza, they, they have a, a, a profile uh, of maternal uh, sequences, uh, mitochondrial sequences, that is distinct from the host population, clearly. But it's difficult, and I, 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 I hope not to have big discussions on that, uh, on considering them as uh, faithfully indicating a uh, Sephardic or whatever uh, uh, label. The only thing is that it seems that they are Middle East, but it's difficult to say the age and so forth. So I, I'll simply state, and that's a fact, that the, 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 the frequencies of those uh, upper groups are different from the host population in a very striking way. The most striking way is, of course, Belmont, in which almost everyone is a single uh, upper group. Uh, on my chromosome, the picture is somewhat similar, but different at the same time. So, on one hand, we have a, a, a pattern, like David was showing for some of the surname. We have a pattern that is distinct from the, the, the host population. It's not typically, as, as the rest are, it's not typical Western European, of course. It shows up with some lineages in, in which, for the Y chromosome, I can bet they are Near East origin. I'm not betting they are Sephardic, but at least they are not typically European, Western European women. And most important is that in that case, in 
contrast with mitochondrial DNA, it's clear that there was some introgression from that recent European <coughs> So there were some males that were introduced. They are, they are now, their descendants are now claiming to be a Jewish extraction, but somewhere in the past, <coughs> there was some intermarriage with uh, locals uh, uh, some, some time in the past. So, uh, now going to the more complex uh, analysis of those uh, recombining markers, we have a paper that I would say is important because it show, uh, shows uh, some data from uh, a community that is also um, that shares some features with with, uh, with the Portuguese descendants of Jews, which is the Chuetas from uh, uh, Mallorca, from uh, Spain, Balearic. And uh, here we have the, the clustering of those uh, populations. So clearly, the black uh, the black squares are non-Jewish, and the, the, the black circles are Jewish. And you see all of them: the uh, Middle Eastern, Ashkenazi, Sephardic, and so forth. Under this uh, under this telescope under this microscope or whatever, looking at this kind of markers, they all cluster together. And uh, so they are not really informative. The distance between the Bergenza uh, Jews and the rest of the population is virtually zero. So seemingly, on this kind of markers, there was, uh, or they are not informative enough, or there was a mixture that, that obscured the picture. The same happens when we we studied a battery of autosomal uh, microsatellites, those that are normally used in forensics, so they are relatively cheap to type. And uh, again, there was uh, no uh, the distance is not significant between the uh, Bregenza Jews and the host population. And then we studied also some X chromosome markets, and uh, here the things are more, more interesting in, and more illuminating because. We noticed that there are uh, some uh, differentiation on one hand, and when we, we compare the two evidence, the two kinds of evidence, the evidence from the autosomal and the, the evidence from the X chromosome, we can infer that, that indeed the sex, the, 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 the gender was uh, in, in the gene flow was important. So seemingly, <coughs> most of the gene flow from the host community into this uh, remnants of the, the Jewish presence in Portugal, they were carried mainly by males. And uh, unfortunately, we have not too many data on, <laughs> yes, on uh, genome-wide, uh, as far as I know. Uh, and uh, this result, this data we are going to show, resulted from uh, an expedition to, to Belmont, years ago, and uh, of course Doran was there, and he's still able to, <laughs> to recall those moments. It's unbelievable, it's 13 years ago, it's, it's time flies. And uh, the main conclusion, and I, I'm quoting, this is a, a, a sentence from the paper, that the only, uh, the only individual that was uh, from Belmont, from the, the area we are dealing now with, uh, the only individual uh, fits or falls in the very center of major Jewish cluster or the PCA analysis and is distant from the host population. So, but a single individual is just a single individual. We desperately need to enlarge this. So uh, in summary, uh, I would say that, uh, that this these communities are, uh, have a very complex and uh, heterogeneous uh, demographic issue, as, as, as I tried to explain to you. So probably we cannot fit the same model to Belmont and to Northeastern, uh, let's say, Jews. Probably they have different ways of reacting to the pressures around them. And uh, probably we will not be able to clarify the picture in Portugal without studying at the same time those that fled from Portugal in the map that uh, uh, 
that it was showing there were lots of, of escapees from Portugal to, to the Mediterranean, not, not Europe, but there was a very important uh, way of escaping the, 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 the prosecution here, or in Portugal, sorry, uh, was uh, the New World. But there, there are lots of uh, communities that could be traced, uh, particularly in Brazil, that we know that could be uh, helping us to clarify some of this. Uh, don't forget that the first synagogue that was uh, built in the New World was built in Brazil. Shortly lived, and then again by Portuguese in, in nowadays New York. So uh, Sephardic Jews were much more important some centuries ago. Things done. And uh, pray, uh, or pay my compliments to the, to, to the talk uh, yesterday evening. I would say that genealogy is absolutely important. But I, I, I'm, I'm more uh, strong in, in the claims that were made. I would say that uh, genealogy is, as, as is a hard discipline, is a hard science. So records only help to construct genealogy. All right? So unfortunately, we, we have no data on the, for many reasons, and some of them are the difficulty we have to talk with, uh, with people outside genetics. And uh, so we have no data. Personally, I did the genealogy of Belmont community up to 1850. And what I can tell you is that there's a big surprise. Uh, from the genetic point of view in marriage, Belmont is not a community. Belmont is, is two communities. So there are a few people that only <coughs> marry among them. And by coincidence, those are rich. And there's a larger proportion of also only there is among them, uh, which are poor. <coughs> Worse than that, the, the, the neighborhood where the poor community lives is called Morocco. So the segregation between the two sub-communities is even, from a genetic point of view, is even bigger than between, than between any of them and all Christians. Second, uh, there was a, a, a moment in, in the history of those communities where they, they came to surface and they were brought into the Jewish community as a whole. But that was just years before the, the rise of right-wing movements in Europe. And uh, so the, the, those communities again got into clandestine and cryptic. Uh, so, Twice as in Belmont, uh, fathers and sons were married at the same day in the 1920s, by the beginnings of the 1930s. So the community that, that was coming into light was again uh, brought into light. And that uh, will, will have some reflect on the last remark I have in this. But another weakness of this, uh, this uh, report I'm, I'm, uh, I'm showing you is that there is a total lack of uh, unco there's an uncoordination of all this. Uh, so I, I strongly urge if, if the community is uh, interested into that, there should be some, some effort to, to, to standardize and to get some commitment and support of long, of long term. Because just words of, 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 uh, of research do not solve any of those questions. And the, 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 the amount of information and the amount, and the amount of skills we, we lose in each, in each uh, PhD student we, we yeah. make and goes away and there's no job and so forth, it's uh, really uh, hard. And uh, coming to a, a, a very serious issue that was already talked about uh, is that we have a very poor sense. And one of the reasons is that uh, we, have, we have detected a very high heterogeneity in the cooperative mass in the center. And so it seems that some of the old people, for instance, are still afraid that some dark age will come, so they don't cooperate. We have the opposite. We have those hyper uh, proud to, to, to 
big bank to Jewish street. And uh, what, I, what I'm afraid of is that we have uh, a source of bias in this. So if we are simply, according to cooperativeness, we are obviously not forcing anybody to, to give a sample. Perhaps we are just sampling those that, uh, uh, well, uh, either they are not Jews or they are quite Jews. <coughs> And on the other hand, we, has, we have also some difficulties with uh, uh, <coughs> local uh, authorities on the ethics. Because they, they are, as we mentioned also today, they are hyper-protected. They don't want us to study, even with uh, can informed consent and so forth. They intend to deny the rights to the people to know who or what they are. So uh, those are uh, difficulties that are uh, being very difficult. And uh, for instance, uh, in Belmont, I, I have to trust you that in Belmont, the, the, the return to orthodoxy was uh, really uh, troublesome because uh, the first rabbi was was uh, a Bashkenazi stretcher, was not speaking Portuguese, was not understanding Portuguese, and so uh, and was telling them that for what they should do. People that were for 400 years uh, in some kind of faith, and now somebody from abroad was telling them what to do. That was, uh, so there was a split, uh, good intentions, but there was a split that was uh, avoided, I would say. So uh, removing the dark uh, pages, I, I, I think, as I told you, that uh, we need desperately genome-wide studies covering uh, more extensively the, uh, the things we, we detected uh, as missing before. Of course, this would, would require a, a more solid structure. And uh, one thing that has not been thought, and I think will be uh, answering some of our questions in a more uh, clear way, is the use of ancient data. And uh, that will face, of course, lots of ethical and Social uh, issues, but uh, we have we we have a few cases of of, um, of uh, remnants of uh, bones, teeth, and things like that that were not uh, uh, well, reasonably assignable to, to Jewish origin in in Iberia, and uh, if uh, funding and, and authorizations are, are given. Instantaneous and snapshot of uh, the history of uh, Portuguese uh, children. Uh, so I, I have too many things to, to have. Uh, of course, Gadi uh, in, in particular. And uh, so uh, I'll show you that, that the Portuguese have those uh, uh, equivalent of uh, Uncle Sam or John Bull in England, but they have two sexes. So there is Zepovinho for male. Maria for women for female, and uh, those are uh, representing the anonymous Portuguese that uh, contributed to this. And uh, I thank you for your patience.